Okay, I, we are live. Welcome, welcome to Comics and Color, Volume 33. Um, I'm very excited about this one. We've got some really exciting guests that we're going to talk to in a couple of minutes. But first, we're going to uh, go through a few little news items. Uh, my name is Kagan Luce, and I am the co-founder and um, organizer of the Comics and Color Festival, as well as these Comics and Color sessions. And I'm really excited to be here today. I'm doing this. So first of all, um, since this is our first um, session since the festival, I uh, just wanted to let folks know that you can go on comicsandcolor.org and you can see some great photos from the festival as well as replays of all the panels that we had. We had a bunch of great ones down here. You can see we had an animation panel. Um, this one is the crowdfunding panel and the women in comics panel as well as all the rest of them are available on our website, as well as on our YouTube channel, uh, as, as well as some great pictures from the uh, live uh, open air market. So uh, go check that out. It was a great time. And we're looking forward to doing it again next year in April. Um, a couple of artists from our collective did um, some chalk art for the Boston Public Library for Juneteenth. Uh, just a couple of different branches. We just did some tribute to uh, the Juneteenth holiday now being a national holiday and uh, felt worth celebrating. So uh, we did that and so hopefully this celebration will just get bigger and bigger. And uh, so Zahira Truth, um, LJ Baptiste and myself did a bunch of branches and some really fun artwork and brought in some you know, children to do art with us. And that's great. And I think we'll be doing some more of that throughout the summer. Um, just on a personal note, I have a comics workshop coming up on July 21st with the Transformative Action Project um, called Anyone Can Make Comics, where I just talk about techniques to uh, create a four panel strip comic. And you can find more about that at tap.violencetransformed.org check that if you get a chance. Um, uh, MICE, which is, um, as you all know, is a uh, local uh, indie comic expo, is uh, instead of, you know, they're trying to do some new things because of COVID this year. So they're doing a, a mini MICE out at Starlight Square in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is an outdoor space that they've been activating for some really great programming. But they're going to have a, a show there on uh, August 28th and 29th. Uh, that's a Saturday and Sunday where they're going to have a bunch of you know, local artists um, showing some indie stuff. Uh, Mice is always amazing every year. And uh, so this should be really, really fun and outdoors and safe and all that good stuff. Um, they're also, uh, they do mini grants every year. So they've actually increased the number and the amount that they're giving this year. Uh, the application, I believe you've got a couple of days yeah, till July 1st, uh, it starts on July 1st to September 1st. So get your stuff together and get you some money to uh, print out your books and stuff. This is a really great program that they have um, helping indie comic creators uh, put their books together, which is can be very helpful. So definitely check that out. And uh, Mike's Expo slash Grants dash 2021 is where you go and find more information about that. Um, a few things that happened since uh, our last time we were together. Uh, I did a animation panel for the Roxbury Film Festival uh, featuring some great uh, animators. Uko Ingu, I spelled it wrong on this, and I apologize to Uko. Um, Tyrell Notley, Zero Snake, who we all know. Uh, Mark and Mike Davis, who are uh, the Mad Twins, who are uh, some, and they're all just amazing animators, and it was a really great conversation. And you can find that on rocksfilmfest.com. They've got the, um, the uh, replays up there as well as their YouTube channel. So that was uh, really worth checking out. Um, we also did a panel with Harleen Singh, um, the director of Drawn Together, which was a really great movie about uh, diversity and stereotypes in comics. Um, that was in May. And I believe they put it up on 
someplace. I haven't been able to find it, but as soon as I do, I will definitely uh, share that out to the social media and the group so that you can check that out. That was actually a really, really great conversation myself and Kristen, uh, one of our members, uh, interviewed her together and it was really cool. And the, the movie is great too. You definitely check it out. You can find it on YouTube possibly, but definitely there's a trailer that kind of gives you an idea of what the film is about. It's definitely worth checking out talking about all the stuff we talk about at Comics and Color. Um, I wanted to bring this up because I'm pretty excited about this. Um, Naomi is going to be entering the Arrowverse. Uh, if you're not familiar with Naomi, it's a comic by, uh, I believe, Brian Michael Bendis, who's known for the, creating Miles Morales as well, uh, is going to be a part of the Arrowverse uh, on the CW. Uh, Ava DuVernay is producing it, I believe. And uh, it, the story is great. I'm gonna talk a little bit about it a little later as one of my recommendations, but uh, definitely I'm excited about this story coming into the Arrowverse. I think it'll really uh, be awesome. I mean, if Ava DuVernay is attached to it, you know it's gotta be good. Um, also another uh, comic to TV translation, um, Bitter Root, which is a comic that I, I love to talk about um, by Sanford Green and um, David Walker, among others, uh, is going to be created into a movie and Regina King has been tapped to direct. So I think that's really exciting. I mean, it's an incredible book, a great story, um, kind of Afrofuturistic steampunk-ish story about uh, a family who fights demons um, using kind of steampunk technology and it's a really well-drawn and well-written book, and uh, I think it'll make an incredible uh, movie. So definitely check that out when it comes out. Um, this one I just added in. Um, they did a redesign on Miles Morales' costume. We gave him like a sweatsuit for the 10th anniversary. I, I don't love it, honestly. I don't think it's kind of unnecessary, and I don't know. I don't want Spider-Man to have a, a tracksuit on. I want him to have his traditional costume. Maybe I'm just a traditionalist, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, I just bring up stuff to see what other people think, but I'm not, uh, I'm not blown away by the redesign. So we'll see what happens with it. And that's all the news I have for now. Let me escape out of that. So I wanted to have a quick discussion if folks are in. We don't have a whole lot of people on the call today, but um, I wanted to, I'll put it out to Jacob and to Chris to see. And my question today is, what was a, a cartoon, a comic, a show that really helped you get through the pandemic? Like, you know, we've been kind of locked in the house, probably watching more TV than you've ever watched in your life. And, um, you know, what property did you really kind of find and explore and really enjoy? I can tell you that for my, one of the things that got me through was Craig of the Creek. I love that show. It's a, it's a nice escapism. The, the, you know, the stories are nice and fun, it's short. And uh, I just love, you know, the character of Craig and uh, how he, you know, just captures that wonderment of children out on adventures. So uh, that was one for me. Um, any of you guys, Chris or Jacob? Or um, or Ram? um, I have a few. Sure. Um, I actually watched a few long running series. So I started One Piece over the summer. Well, um, yeah, it's very long. Um, I mean, I recently started Attack on Titan and that's been pretty good. But yeah, I've, I've just been picking like wrong long running series um just to keep me busy like my hero or full metal alchemist yes i love full metal alchemist what about you jacob i know you're a big fan of attack on titan well ever since it ended like two months ago i've kind of like I, i've been trying to complete my money collection but other than that i've been looking for other anime and i even though i have i've already heard about them i i'm trying to get more into and there's like Demon Slayer or Jujutsu Kaisen. I tried watching Naruto Shippuden, but the plot is just so dragged out. It's easier to watch it when it was coming out like 
weekly, but yeah. watching it like day by day, being able to watch full seasons. Like that's so much time I sometimes have in my hands, just kind of boring. Yeah. And they, they have a lot of filler episodes in that, I find. Yeah. But it is, there is a lot of it. That that's when I just asked my friend Mateo about um, the Attack on Time, the Naruto series, because they could just tell you every single, like they could tell you the plot of every single episode, like back to back. I have no idea how. That's a lot. Lots of. I can also do that with One Piece, and I come. I kudos to anyone who can tell you the plot to One Piece almost back to back, because people are always saying it gets interesting around the 400th episode. I got a lot to live. Okay, I'm gonna watch 400 episodes. I did not make it to 400. I might have made it to two or three seasons of One Piece before I was like, "Woo!" It's not like a thousand episodes right now. That's insane. Yeah, Naruto, One Piece, those ones are, those will keep you busy for a long time. But uh, those are good, good recommendations. I like those. So I have a few recommendations. Um, well, did, I'm sorry, did Ashley or Ram, did you have anything you wanted to share about what properties you've been enjoying through the pandemic? Um, Actually, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I, I pretty much fell off on uh, comics. I, I have to uh, uh, get back into comics. I've been paying more attention to video games. And so uh, E3 just passed. There's a new game uh, from the publisher from software that's, that's coming now called Elden Ring. And it's in the same vein as um, uh, Sekiro, also uh, Bloodborne. Uh, and it's, it's, you know, that, that whole thing. And so uh, it's a lot of hype surrounding that. It comes out uh, January of next year. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, my boyfriend and I have been playing the games that leads up to Elden Ring. So that's been holding us over uh, during the pandemic. Uh, very frustrating because this is unforgiving. <laughs> um, if you've never played those games, definitely uh, look them up on YouTube and you can just see people uh, silently pull their hair out. <laughs> um, and what else? Um, there's there's something else. Oh, also, I've, I've been playing some old school games uh, from the PS2 era. There's this game called Dark Cloud. And so it's the PlayStation version of Zelda. And the uh, main character, Tone, he even resembles Link in a way. And he doesn't have a voice uh, or a voice actor the same as uh, Link. But um, yeah, that's, that's what I've been spending my time doing uh, in between deadlines. Video games are a good way to fill your time, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've actually gotten back into playing a few video games. I mean, I have a, like an Xbox 360, so they're all, all very, very old. But, uh, you know, the pandemic has allowed me to, because it's just, whenever I play video games, it's like five hours later, I'm like, well, what happened? Where, where did the day go? So that's why I kind of stayed away from them for a long time. but. During the pandemic, I definitely found my way back. Well, I, I've actually been playing the 360 as well. Uh, have you heard of this RPG called Lost Odyssey? Lost oh, Odyssey? No. Uh, that, I don't know. Yeah, that came out way back uh, 2007 or 8. And uh, it was created by the father of Final Fantasy. His name slips my mind at the moment. But it, uh, he created the game along with Nobuo Uematsu, who did the soundtrack. And Nobuo, he's you know, super popular for doing all of the Final Fantasy soundtracks up until 12. And then I think he came back for a little bit of 15. But Lost Odyssey, if you can find it, definitely get it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Cool. And what about you, Ram? Anything you've been enjoying lately? Well, um, I, actually, there's a, there's a, uh, I love horror. So I've been, of course, reading um, Japanese horror um, manga and comics, Shinji Ito, you know, the spirals. And that's one of my favorite uh, series. I mean, I love his, his art and, and how he approaches storytelling. And I mean, so scary and freaky, uncanny, uncanny valley. That's where he goes. <laughs> yes, yes. Japanese horror is especially scary, I find. Right. Awesome. Well, that's great. Well, I've got a few recommendations of books that I've been reading lately um, that have kind of come in. So Mill City's Finest, this is by one of our um, artists who's a part of Comics in Color. Um, Steve Sam 
Sam Steve Koa, excuse me. So he ran a Kickstarter and um, I finally got my um, rewards of the first issue. It's really dope. It takes place in Lowell, which is a city north of Boston. And I always love when comic artists represent their own city. And he is a, um, I wanna say he's Nigerian. So there's a lot of like African folklore. And if I got that wrong, I'm sure he'll call me up and tell me. But uh, so uh, it's really, it's really very a cool book. And uh, definitely enjoy that one. I also picked up Showtime. It's not another wear spider. Showtime um, by Greg Anderson LSA, uh, who's been on a couple of panels for Comics and Color. But uh, he's a great writer. I love his work, and the Isnana character is dope. And this is kind of a really cool story about Isnana kind of finding his way around New York and um, meeting some new people and learning about the culture a little bit. And it's uh, it's really really a fun fun book. So I recommend that one. I also backed that Kickstarter. So I always love my rewards. <laughs> um, I also picked up Nubia, a real one um, by L.L. McKinney and Robin Smith. Uh, so this book is really, really fun, really, really well drawn. I love Robin's artwork and the story is really cool. It modernizes Nubia as a kind of a modern teenager and uh, the experiences she goes through and it's really relatable even though she's, you know, a super woman, Wonder Woman, a sister. Mm -hmm. But uh, really, really I love the reimagining of the story and how they put it together. And it's really fun. Definitely recommend that one. And I also picked up Naomi, the first season um, by Brian Michael Bendis, um, David Walker as well. Oh, that's right. And Jamal Campbell. I love this story. It's a really, really dope story. It's kind of similar now that I'm talking about it to Nubia in that it's like a coming of age story of a teenage girl who discovers that, well, Nubia doesn't discover she has powers, she knows, but mm -hmm. Naomi discovers she has powers and uh, that she's from a whole nother world. And it's a really amazing book. And I'm, I'm excited to see how the movie turns out, but um, this is definitely worth reading. Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, it's really, really good. And the artwork is amazing. And, you know, she's, you know, tied into the Justice League and all that eventually. But, so this is kind of her origin story. Really, really good. I'm not, I was trying to look last night to see if there's a season two coming and if this is still being published and I couldn't really find it. But if it is, pick it up, but pick this one up as well. So that's all my recommendations. Um, oh, also just as a side note, Quok, this is by mm -hmm. um, my man, uh, Tak Toishima. This was, he did it as a fundraiser for uh, um, Asian organizations. This is a story about a Chinese man. Um, so he donated to like the Stop Asian, Asian Hate Movement with this, the proceeds from this book. It's a really great book, really heartfelt uh, story, but pick it up if you can. I think he's still selling it on his website. Um, he's also the author of Secret Asian Man Comics, if you haven't read that, it's also really cool. So and that's all my recommendations. So I'm gonna go right into talking with our amazing guests we have here today. Um, I'll just do a quick intro. Um, Miss Ashley A. Woods is a comic book artist and writer and creator from Chicago, known for her work on, on Niobe. Did I pronounce that right? Niobe. Uh, Niobe. <laughs> Niobe, she is life. Lady Castle in the Tomb Raider series. She got her start through self-publishing her own action fantasy comic series, The Millennia War, which led to her career in comics and TV. Her most prominent work is Niobe, She is Life, with actress Amandala Stern, Sternberg, Stanberg, and Sebastian A. Jones of Stranger Comics. Her latest artwork can be seen with Marvel, Image Comics, Vault Comics, and HBO. So welcome, really excited to have you here. And Ram Demony, did I pronounce that correctly? I was sort of ask. That's all right, uh, Ram Devanini. Devanini. Uh, mm -hmm. is a filmmaker and publisher and founder at Rata Alex, based in New York City and New Delhi. He has produced and edited and direct, uh, sorry, he has produced, edited and directed the feature documentary, The Karma Killings, which was shot in India and released on Netflix. Recently, he produced The Russian Woodpecker, which won a grand jury prize at the 2015 Sundance Film Festival and was nominated for an Independent Spirit Award. He's the creator of the interactive social activist comic books Priya Shakati, Shakti, 
which received the Tribeca Film Institute New Media Fund from the Ford Foundation and supported by the World Bank and honored by the UN Women as a gender equality champion. So welcome around. I'm really excited to talk to you today about this comic project that you um, you are working on. Well, just just came out earlier this month, and you premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. And I, I just want to know from each of you, and I'm sure it's a different story, but how did you get into comics as a form of storytelling? Ashley, you want to start? I'll... Um. So um, let me think. Uh, actually, I, I had a few people in my family who collected comics and they used to uh, pass down their comics to me. So some of those titles included um, X-Men, X-Men. Um, there's a few more that uh, from Marvel, uh, some early, early titles that, that have been discontinued. But that was that was my start, uh, my introduction to comics. And from there, I began to make homemade comics and the stories would uh, be about my toys. <laughs> and uh, eventually uh, I decided around maybe 15 or 16 that I wanted to uh, pursue it professionally. And so uh, straight out of high school, uh, around 18, I uh, uh, created Millennial War and uh, it was first published in 2006. There's currently uh, seven books in the graphic novel and I am uh, currently working on the uh, next installment. So uh, I'm hoping to release it at some point this year. Wow. So you're yeah. still working on the Millennial War series. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Thank That's you. Been going for a while. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And it's so funny that whenever I talk to people about like how they got you know, into comics, X Men is like X Men is like the gateway drug. Everybody is like, I picked up X Men and it spoke to me, and I never put comics down again. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And what about you, Ram? How did you get into uh, comics? Sure, actually, actually, do you have that uh, Indian comic book that I gave you uh, right next to you or something? While while Ashley's uh, picking that up. So um, I was born and grew up in a small village in India. Uh, you know, back in the late 70s, 80s. And um, I came to comics because in India, uh, there's these mythological comic books that are like insanely popular. And uh, actually will hold up a comic version that, um, that I gave her when she came out to New York. Um, maybe you can put her on the screen. But anyway, let me uh, actually say something and I'll mute myself for a second. Uh, testing, testing. Uh, are you able to see the cover? Yes. So that's, uh, that's, so there you go. So that's the comic book uh, series. He's very popular in Hindu mythological comics, um, which like millions, maybe 100 million, 200 million kids used to read in India. Um, and I, I grew up reading those. And uh, when I came to the US, I then kind of just discovered American comics, especially uh, The Incredible Hulk which is one of my favorite comics of all time. Uh, I mean, the whole series and just him as a character. Um, and, uh, it, you know, this was again in the 80s. So the popular comics for me were, of course, the Star Wars comics that were coming out. Um, um, and uh, yeah, I just sort of, I kind of then just left comics for a while, actually for a long time. And it was not until I started um, developing my comic book series, The Priya Shakti, which is, India's first female superhero that I started basically going back to my childhood uh, and thinking about the mythological comics, the hero comics that I read in America, in the US. Um, and they all sort of came back into helping me formulate this uh, new character in this new series, which also of course helped in um, creating the Jupiter Invincible series, which we just launched as well. Right. Oh, great. So that leads me into my next question is, how did this project come about? Like what brought you together with um, the author and the two of you to create this really interesting comic project? Well, thank you. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll start the journey and then um, I'll let Ashley kind of finish it because as, as anyone knows as a comic book creator, it's the illustrator that kind of finishes the story. So um, I started this back in summer of 2019. Um, I was invited to uh, South Africa for the first time I've ever been there. 
And um, I was doing teaching actually comic book workshops and how to use augmented reality with comics. And there I started researching uh, about apartheid and met many of the freedom fighters who were fighting against apartheid, both uh, black and Indian South Africans. And they told me their stories. And it was just, I mean, I grew up at a time when apartheid was ending. Um, so I didn't know too much about it other than what was in almost like historical documents and what, and the stories of Nelson Mandela. And I went to the apartheid museum in Johannesburg and started just researching because it was just a fascinating story about how the transition and the, and the ending of apartheid happened. And in the apartheid museum, I saw these photos from basically the early 20th century. Um, and I looked at these photos when apartheid first started in South Africa. And I realized, wow, these photos look exactly like Jim Crow, the photos that I would see in the deep South or in like this in the middle states. Um, and they looked exactly the same. And later I learned that um, actually the apartheid government, when they wanted to, when they researched how to implement a system of control and suppression of uh, minority groups, they basically came to the US and researched and got all the information from the Jim Crow South, from the governments, and then implemented that and went back to South Africa and implemented apartheid from that. Um, so that's where this idea came. And then I came back to the US and spent the rest of the summer in Maryland, where I then just uh, doing another residency. And I just researched, went into the plantations, into the slave quarters that were all over Maryland, uh, many of them falling apart, um, and just took photos and researched and went to the Library of Congress and did a lot of research there. And then eventually to the Schoenberg Center in New York City. And this is where this idea of creating a um, African-American um, enslaved person who's given supernatural powers sort of came into mind, the power, of course, of uh, immortality, invincibility. And I approached my friend, uh, Yusuf Kumunyaka, who is a great poet. He's won the Pulitzer Prize for poetry. And I asked him uh, if he'd be interested in writing a comic book, which he never, ever even thought about doing, you know. Guy writes poem, I mean, writes massive books, um, writes um, jazz, you know, you name it. And he's, and he's, you know, lived the history of America in the 20th century into the 21st. He was born in, um, in uh, the deep south of Louisiana. Of course, he was born during the time of, of Jim Crow um, and lived that as well. And he uh, went to Vietnam, served as a soldier in Vietnam, and he has a whole enormous history of the African-American experience in the United States. And he uh, it took a little convincing, but I told him, you know, you can make superhero comics and comics that deal with serious subjects and really tackle complex issues and have really complex nuanced characters. And it can be done. And you gotta have a great writer like Youssef to kind of tackle that. And that's where Youssef came on board. And uh, we spent many months just brainstorming and he eventually wrote the script. And while we were doing that, we were also researching um, artists to do. And the one person that just kept coming up in our basically research was Ashley. Um, and strangely enough, I asked Ashley several, uh, almost a year and a half before I asked her to do Jupiter to actually illustrate one of my Priya comics, but um, she was not available. So it was just, just by chance that she was available to do this. And she agreed to do it. And um, from there, I will get, hand it over to Ashley on how she kind of came into it and how she then took it further. Right, right. Uh, so um, I joined a project um, January of last year. And so Ram and I worked closely together uh, throughout all of 2020, uh, uh, designing the characters, working on the thumbnails and laying out the book. And the one thing that uh, we, we took special consideration was how to approach the AR aspect of the book. Uh, from what I understand, this is the first uh, AR comic to ever exist. So uh, what that means is when you look through the physical book, you can download an, an app. And if you hold the app or your phone over certain panels, actually the entire book, um, it'll, it'll, it'll become animated. And it also uses uh, facial technology. And so you can see people of that time 
um, in movement as if they're alive within the book. So like I said, it's the first of its kind. And when we were um, you know, producing the book, I had to keep in mind that uh, typically when you're drawing the comic, you're just drawing it as you see the panels head on. But then when you're drawing for animation, you have to you know, see the, the environment as in layers and you have to be mindful that when this certain element in the foreground, be it a character or, or whatever, is moved to the left or the right, you have to have the background fully drawn. And so that was the greatest challenge for me, uh, just the workload. And then uh, there was also some technical difficulties because I feel like pers this is like something I personally uh, think that it's, it's a fact of life. Um, whenever you're about to have a breakthrough in something, that's when Murphy's Law steps in. <laughs> so, you know, there was some uh, technical difficulties and, you know, but we got, you know, we, we uh, you know, we passed all of those hurdles and uh, overall uh, it was very fun and enriching for me. Um, I'm definitely, definitely grateful, you know, for the opportunity to have my work, um, you know, be a part of, you know, our conversation, you know, African-American uh, history in the conversation in America right now um, is huge. And uh, as far as the character Jupiter, um, I really identify with him because for me, his whole story isn't just about uh, freedom, but it's about identity and you know, having the, the strength to you know, walk your path, even though everyone else in your tribe has a different mindset. I think that's something that kind of coincides with uh, society today, especially with social media. A lot of people uh, are focused on, do I join the group or should I just project my own voice and stick to my own morals? And that's something that uh, Jupiter, uh, you know, he has to grapple with. And also there is, he, he undergoes a, a huge transformation um, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually as well. And that transformation scares the people in his tribe or in, on, the plant, on the plantation. It scares the, uh, the, the slave masters and it, it scares the other slaves. And, um, and he's attacked for it, you know? So uh, I think it's interesting that he's immortal because he's, you know, he's a slave and he's in bondage physically, but even still, uh, no man can really be a master over him because they can't kill him. You know, his life is his alone. So um, I think it's, it's uh, Jupiter Invisible is, is a really uh, groundbreaking project uh, in many ways. That story just sounds fascinating. I'm really, I'm excited to read this book when I get a chance to read it. Um, but so you, yeah. you spoke a it's, little it's, bit. Are you, actually you're still with us? Okay. <laughs> I thought you were frozen there for a second. But you mentioned a little bit about like what it's like to draw a comic for AR. Mm -hmm. Can you expound on that a little bit more? Cause it, I'm just, I'm just fascinated by the, the AR aspect of this and like, and I want Ram to talk more about like the technology uh, that creates it, but I, from Ashley, I'd like to know like what you had. So you say I had to draw extra scenes, or so um, if you imagine a drawing program, uh, you know all programs use layers, right. and so let's say I I draw the character on the top layer and the background on you know the layer underneath it. Uh, typically, you wouldn't. Uh, put too much concentration on what's going on behind that character because that character is going to be static. Uh, it's not. Yeah, it's not going to be animated. But since oh we, but but since we knew that the 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 book would be animated um, as well as you know printed you know traditionally, I on on the. Environment layer, I, I, I illustrated it fully with that in mind that the character would be uh, shifted away uh, eventually, if that makes sense. So that whole layer is, is fully illustrated. Mm. Um, Interesting. Mm -hmm. Something you wouldn't really, I wouldn't think of that part that it's, you gotta set it up for movement almost like animation. 
So like, uh, let's, let's look at that poster behind you where it says Boston Comics and Color Festival. And let's pretend that we're going to animate that text. Um, be it as it is now, we probably wouldn't put too much focus on what's going on behind that text. But since we want to make an AR uh, poster, then I will fully you know, uh, illustrate the sky and the character and everything that's going on behind that text. So that's how I had to approach uh, Jupiter Invincible, uh, like every single panel on every single page. It had to be like fully uh, realized. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's a lot of extra work, sounds yeah. like. But what you can do with it. So Ram, can you tell us a little bit about like what the technology is? So, we, so at Comics and Color, we had a young woman come on uh, and talk about a little bit. She was doing some like, mural stuff with AR, but I wasn't, right. didn't really understand how the technology works, like how it activates and all that stuff. So can you talk a little bit about sure. that? Well, um, I mean, AR, AR is basically like a QRC code, but instead of having those uh, QRC codes, QR codes, uh, what you, the image itself or the artwork itself becomes the trigger that initiates it. And the real artistic kind of talent or quality is what you embed into the into that so with an app you can scan a page or, or a mural or whatever and that mural will come to life in some way uh, whether through animation or if you want to put in video or other elements to kind of make it more interesting you can do that um actually i'm going to share the screen i'll, I'll show the remember the video that i sent you Is yes all right yep. if i play that absolutely uh, i was going to play it but if you can do it i've set the sure. screen sharing to everyone can share so Okay, and I'm going to share sound also. Uh, so hopefully everyone can see this, and I'll just play real quick. So basically, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it embeds a lot. Of, besides the animation, I was able to embed um, a lot of the uh, photos, the research that I did at the Library of Congress and the photos that I took at the plantation and then in the slave quarters around Maryland. Um, and they were all embedded into the comic through the AR. Uh, and that's what was kind of, this is also what it was exhibited at Tribeca. So people would walk around Tribeca and all the murals would be, um, uh, all the pages would be, posted on the wall and people would with their app see that see it literally come to life in front of them it's kind of cool so it looks like some of it is video and some of it is like animated sequences did you right. did you animate them did you do the animation i did i did a mix some of it i did some basic animation but i also there's a lot of good archival stuff that i was able to take and i had to basically um through adobe premiere and photoshop and everything else uh, After Effects kind of add green screen and try to take that the background out because it, the trick is I want to make sure the video or the animation appears exactly it's like it's on the page. Um, it shouldn't appear like a layer um, and, and remove from the page, but it should appear like you can see the page in the background or be a part of the page. And that's kind of why it's, it, it's, a, it's effective and like kind of mind blowing. Because, you know, to an extent, AR is almost like a magic trick, you know. Right. You think you're seeing it on the page, on the wall or whatever, but in reality, you're seeing it as a layer on your phone. And uh, but that's, that's the beauty of it, if you can do it really well. And I love that, you know, you, you're taking actual photos of people from right. that era and including that. So it's, I mean, um, comics are a great teaching tool, right, to teach people about 
eras or movements or whatever that happened but this really like puts you right into it and even to have the faces right. moving like that is really it's really uh, intense thank you yeah i mean um there's so much possibilities and capabilities now of integrating technology and art together and doing some fabulous things like that really 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 deep i think that's really cool so what was it like um premiering a comic book at the Tribeca Film Festival. I don't think I've heard of anything <laughs> like that before. And that's that's a really cool actually, uh, opportunity. Yeah, I'm gonna let Ashley, because she's the one who um, flew all the way from Chicago to New York to be a part of it. And this is probably, I mean, I had comics, I actually, my Priya Shakti was um, at Lincoln Center at the New York Film Festival before. So I've had experience with that. But for Ashley, I think this is the first time, especially going to a film festival, and experiencing that. Ashley, why don't you explain your reaction? Um, it was it was definitely exciting. It was it was fresh and new. I think the uh, coolest part for me was that um, so our comic was shown in the uh, VR and gaming area, and so in order to access that area, you had to you know pass by our setup, our you know, Jupiter Invisible setup. And so uh, that was that was pretty cool that we were uh, right there at the entrance and that the entire book was like laid out uh, on the wall, as well as uh, there was there was a specialized cutout of the uh, cover uh, in, in such a way the cover and the uh, the uh, logo. So the title logo. So that was it was just it was just really cool. Um, and it was nice to see people's reactions uh, to the work. Uh, the show overall was was uh, awesome. Uh, I would say that my favorite game, that VR game that I experienced there uh, is called uh, Paper Birds. And so Edward Norton uh, and also Josh Stone. Josh Stone is a British singer. And if you remember, you know, Fight Club and a whole bunch of other movies, Edward Norton. So this is their project, uh, Paper Birds. And uh, it's, it's, it's a really haunting story uh, about um, an artist trying to uh, hold on to his inspiration and the inspiration is personified as these little um, bird-like beings. And it turns quickly into a story of control and he's trying to capture these, these, these spirits essentially. And um, his actions, uh, ripple down to his grandchildren and so uh, his granddaughter you know she has to uh, wrestle with her shadow or, or her soul at risk you know being taken so yeah it's, it's all of this heavy uh heavy stuff but it's, it's mixed in with some lightheartedness and uh the visuals were amazing um yeah it was, it, it, it was an amazing uh game the whole festival was very cool as far as um the day that we presented the uh, comic on Juneteenth, uh, Ram and I opened uh, the discussion on stage. And so uh, that was a huge honor as well. And um, it was great to see the other artists work. Um, one movie that we uh, watched was called uh, Neutral Ground. And it was about um, the aftermath, well, not really the aftermath, but it was about the stat the Confederate statues being taken down uh, in recent years and the current aftermath of what's going on in society and you know just how times are changing regarding that. So that was um, really interesting and, and educational. Um, it was it was really cool to see different people's um, perspectives who were actually a lot closer, you know, to to what was happening. So and what was the um... What was the reaction of the audience to your work, like the story, the story and the augmented reality piece? Um, it was it was you know very pleasant. You know everyone was just you know very excited at first, uh, maybe a little confused because they didn't they'd never heard of an AR comic before, uh, but definitely curious. And and once they started engaging with the uh, the pages. Um, yeah, there's, oh, where can we find this? And where can we read it? Or they will take some of the literature that was available, you know, the posters and postcards that we had. Um, so yeah, it, it was definitely positive. You know, uh, no one flipping tables. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, it was good. Well, I, I just wonder because, you know, this is a kind of story, you know, 
right now we're in this time where they're doing voter suppression and outlawing critical race theory in schools, you know what I mean? And this is a story about that time and I'm sure has a lot of, you know, the truth of how things were back then in it. And I just wonder, so there hasn't, you haven't experienced any sort of negative um, feedback? Well, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, uh, we just launched it uh, about 10 days ago. So, um, and we also did an event at the Schoenberg Center as well, part of their um, Black Literature uh, Festival. Um, overall, positive response everywhere. Um, and even online, we haven't had any negative responses. I, I think, I think partially because um, the, the nature of the comic, because it is, it is, I mean, there's of course a supernatural element of it, but it's very historical. I mean, um, Harriet Tubman's involved, the history of Maryland, the history of slavery. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons why I, I started this project is growing up in uh, New Jersey after I came from India, um, I didn't know anything about slavery. Like uh, 12 years going through the public school system, the only thing that I learned about slavery or even African-American stories was when uh, they played uh, Roots by uh, Alex Haley, you know, just played the miniseries straight through and that was it. Not even a discussion afterwards. So I felt like there was a massive gap that people needed to, to be aware of. And, his, and of course, slavery is such a monumental um, effect and reason why the 20th century and the, the later part, you know, the Civil War to the 20th century is a major effect on that. And people know very little about it. Um, so that's kind of one of the things this comic book is trying to do is approach, approach it from a historical, but also from a fantasy uh, angle, because we want the comic book to actually be read. I mean, just to do a historical comic, I'm, I'm not sure how popular that would be, but trying to make a character that has that fantasy element and incorporate history into it. I think that's where the, the strength is. And I remember um, one of the people at the Tribeca Film Festival took some of the physical comics back um, to his kids um, who are African-American and they read it and they just love the story. And then, and then at the very end, because it's, a, it's a, just the first chapter of hopefully a longer series, right? So there's a to be continued on the last page. Um, the, the, um, his son said, I want more, I want more. And then what he did is um, um, he took out his phone and went back to the first page or the cover and showed him the AR and just like that blew his son's mind because now there's a whole new experience of seeing the comic book, not just through the, 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 the beautiful art that Ashley did, but now through all these other elements in the comic. And that just like, you know, there's so much packed in such a small little piece of uh, artwork, piece of work. Yeah, amazing. And you get, so you get to experience it like twice in that way. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Right. So in your research, um, did you, is there any stories that kind of came up in your research that were like, um, that were particularly influential in the story coming together? You know, like, I don't know if you listen to like well, slave narratives or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, I did. There was, I mean, I, I can't pinpoint any exact ones because I went through a lot in the Library of Congress. Library of Congress is an enormous archive of uh, slave narratives that they actually recorded on audio back in the, the, the basically around the depression era um, in which um, Alan Lomax, that's the person who, who did it, he went back down south and started recording on audio um, many of these narratives of, of uh, former slaves who were now in their like late 80s, 90s, you know, and they were telling their stories. And uh, that was instrumental, of course, the stories of Harry Tubman. I, I, one of my, a lot of the research that I did was follow the Underground Railroad and all the byways in Maryland and uh, tracked and sort of just kept researching about that as well. I mean, there was, there was just many different things that kind of played into it. Um, yeah, it was, it was a whole summer of intensive research that I put into it before I even got to Yusef or Ashley. Wow, that's great. Um, and can you just t tell us what software you used exactly to create the, the AR? Sure, um, I mean, at the, at the core, it's uh, Photoshop because um, with Ashley, she's got to make all those layers um, so even though I actually use uh, the, what's that uh, thing called, Ashley, the software on your iPad? Uh, Procreate. Procreate. So she had to export that to Photoshop and then 
create all the layers, uh, which I need the PSD files. Um, and then from there, I can then sort of design the AR from that. Uh, from that, it led to, uh, of course, using Adobe Premiere, After Effects. Um, the app that I use for the AR is called Artivive, which I recommend everyone kind of playing around with because it's pretty, very standard and rudimentary. The beauty of, it, of that app is anyone can do, anyone can approach it and get into it, but it then becomes the creative elements of yourself that can that allows you to bring it forward into another level. So um, yeah, there was a lot of other software, some um, After, After Effects is a lot for the animation, um, a lot of Adobe Premiere editing everything down, doing a lot of green screen editing too. So uh, I had to think about that as well. So there's all these different things kind of played into it. Yeah, it sounds like a lot went into it. But you know, as it, Comics and Color, we always like to talk about like how it's actually done to, sure. you know, because a lot of us are creators and I am interested in this process, <laughs> honestly, <like> very <laughs> interested. So that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, so what are some, some artists and some stories like in comics or film that you drew from to create this artwork and this story? Um, one of my favorite writers slash artists, and I mention him time and time again, is uh, Hiroaki Samura. Uh, have you heard of this manga called Blade of the Immortal? Yes. Yeah, okay. And so the, the thing that I really love about uh, Samura's work is his pacing and his storytelling. And uh, from what I've learned, reading Blade is uh, how to do uh, action sequences or, or when, when the tension builds, um, sometimes you, know, you want to add more panels to a page to uh, draw out the scene because it makes the eye do more work. You know, you're like looking you know, back and forth and if you have something more fat, if, if the scene is more uh, high octane or fast paced, then you will have less panels or even a splash page because it physically takes less work to, you know, get through the through the book. And also the scene is translated in the mind, you know, uh, in the same way. So, you know, I, I, I've taken that inspiration and I translated it over to um, Jupiter Invincible. Um, Jupiter, I would say, it doesn't have too many action uh, scenes. It, it, there's a couple of um, really tense moments, such as when uh, Jupiter is whipped. Um, he has a couple of um, head button moments with the uh, with the breaker, uh, the main slave master. Um, but overall, the the pacing is is very um, deliberate. And the thing, the way, I, the thing that I really liked about Yusef's uh, translation from the initial script to comic is how he jumped through the scenes. He doesn't, he treats the audience as if the audience is intelligent. You know, he's not holding your hand the whole time. He's not explaining everything, you know, um, scene by scene, action by action. Um, yeah, yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. And um, yeah. Cool. And Ram, how about you? What's uh, influenced well, your story? I, I, I mean, I, I actually, what Ashley said about Yusuf is exactly right. I think um, he really takes the audience as, uh, as, as a participant in this process. And, um, and I, you know, I, I, I'm a documentary filmmaker, so I do a lot of editing. And one of the things that I really um, do in my documentaries and what I really appreciate are jump cuts. So I, I really am very kind of cognizant of the space between the panels and where the audience then can kind of imagine and fill in what needs to be filled in. So that that's so, um, there's only a few stuff scenes in which you kind of get a linear action of you know one movement to the next and so forth and they're very deliberate why we did that but most of the comic book there's a lot of jump cuts and audiences kind of fill in the spaces um and can kind of figure it out and that's where you said writing kind of really works in conjunction with uh ashley's 
Ashley's uh, art and the and, and me as kind of like this editing, almost a cinematic editing kind of style to it, which uh, I that's that's kind of my inspiration for it. Nice, nice, nice. So I wanted to um, give some time to for the audience here to ask a few questions if they'd like to, but uh, I want to ask one more little question of what's what are you guys working on next? Like, have you started to plan a new? I know this is still pretty new and uh, it's kind of your baby, but are there, are there any projects you're working on next that you're excited to talk about? Um, next month, uh, I have a uh, project with DC uh, coming out on July 27th. It's uh, Wonder Woman Black and Gold. And so I did a, a short story uh, with uh, Stephanie Williams. And so that's my next project uh, to, be, to be released. And I am currently working on a um, another, uh, I want to say maybe a graphic novel, uh, but it hasn't been announced yet. But um, so yeah, I'll be spending the rest of my, my year working on this uh, unnamed graphic novel. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. That's exciting. Well, I well, obviously, uh, Yusef's already uh, thinking about the next uh, chapter of the of the series, so he's kind of formulating in his mind how to kind of take it forward. Um, so that might be coming out. Uh, I mean, I want to give enough time for these for this book before we uh, put out another one. Um, but uh, we're releasing a new Priya Priya Shakti comic series uh, coming out in I think September, August September, which will focus uh, called Priya and the Swarm, uh, where Priya tackles um, this digital swarm that uh, is kind of influenced by uh, emotions and also uh, people's insatiable lust for, for porn and sexuality and everything else. Uh, it's a complicated story um, set in India, of course. So that's coming out as well. And uh, yeah, those are the two big comics that I'm kind of focused on for the next six months onwards. Really cool. That sounds like- And I just- <laughs> Yeah, I do. I do want to mention that um, Jupiter. You can download for free the, all the different digital comics. You know, comicology and everything else. Um, you can the, the the various formats, PDF and so on, right off our website. There's no cost. Uh, powerofjupiter.com. So please take a look at it. Yeah, we'll definitely be doing that. But uh, I just wanted to open it up to our guest here. I mean, our uh, audience here, Jam, uh, Jacob. Everybody, uh, Ahmad, I know you're on here. You guys got any questions for these two amazing uh, artists? Yes, 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 yes. I just got to say, this is amazing. I'm a big fan of uh, the traditional way of doing art, and I, I'm also a huge fan of technology, creative technology. So I love when they both just collide. So seeing this is like, it just got my heart fluttering. <laughs> I, downloaded both, I downloaded both issues. Before I, before I fig, before you told me about the free thing, but it looks like it's gonna be worth the money anyway, so it's no big deal. I need to start supporting, you know, all the good things I see out there. Um, I guess, man, I don't even have a question. It's just this is just dope. I guess you know what I do have a question. Um, with, because I'm I'm thinking of the uh, potential of this AR thing, and I mean just to scan something. I'm I've seen so many animations in these panels, and I'm like I'm thinking, dude, if you miss a couple of issues, or if you miss 10 issues and you jump on the 11th, you could probably scan something and kind of get a brief, like this could go in so many directions. Is that something you guys think of? Or is the AR just story, you know, do you keep it strictly within the story? Um, well, I mean, for the AR in particular for this uh, series, I mean, it's, it's, it's only our first chapter. So it's, we haven't really thought that far ahead. But um, maybe that, that might be uh, something to think about in future chapters so people can get the previous stuff. Um, for this one in particular, we, I wanted to embed a lot of historical information because um, there's, of course, an educational component of this comic. And, um, and especially the archive and the research that I put into, into the AR so that people can have a context of where the story comes from. And especially these images and artwork that actually kind of reference and drew from um, because a lot of it is is out there. It's available. People should really know about it. You know. And uh, yes, what Ram said. <laughs> oh wait, but thank 
thank you for that comments and everything. Oh no, Ash, I want to get one more. Kig, if it's cool, just one more question. Yeah, go for it, John. I'm also a big fan of the mainstream stuff. You know, I love the indies. I love the mainstream. Ash, you just mentioned black and gold. Yeah. If you you probably can't talk much about it. You probably signed all the NDAs. <laughs> is Nubia at all involved? The character Nubia, or is it just? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've I've actually been um these these past two weeks I've just been dropping Nubia art, so she definitely uh, plays a, a bigger. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so she she definitely plays a a, a bigger role alongside uh, Wonder Woman, nice. and so uh, there's there's been a lot of conversation, part particularly on Twitter, and so uh, I peep in every now and then, and it's just really cool seeing uh, the reactions. Um, some people even stated like. Oh, DC Comics is giving you know us a reason to come back. I was like, oh, oh wow! So it's 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 live on Twitter right now. Well, all around dopeness, guys. I just gotta say, thank you. Amazing stuff. Anybody else? Come on, I know y'all got some questions. I do. I have a question. Hit it, Chris. Uh, this is for Ashley. How do you divide up your work? Because you sound because um, it sounds like you have a lot of projects going on all at once. Like you have that one at DC that you're talking about. You have the other one, um, Black and Gold. You have um, the one you just created. Uh, how do you divide up your schedule? So something that I learned early on is to not focus on too many things at once. And that helped me back uh, for uh, for a short while early on in my, in my uh, career. And so the projects that I just mentioned, uh, they're come in one after another. So all of these projects I'm focusing on solely as I work on them. Um, and I would encourage, you know, just any artists out there to um, try to stick to a schedule. Don't rely on your motivation because your, mot your mot motivation will fail you eventually. Uh, it's a finite resource. Uh, and so when your motivation does deplete that's where your discipline steps in. So if you can create a daily schedule and stick to that schedule, that's what builds your discipline. And that's what's gonna carry you through each project. And um, the actor, uh, Matthew McConaughey, he said something about uh, breadcrumbs. Like make sure you sweep up all, all of your breadcrumbs today so that you don't have to uh, worry about them tomorrow. Um, I pretty much jacked it up, but he said something uh, like uh, along those lines. But I try to keep that in mind. Just whatever I have on my schedule for that particular day, just knock it out so it doesn't carry over uh, onto uh, the next day. And I imagine you have to learn how to say no as well. Yeah, so. yeah. Because <laughs> you can't, you can't do everything. She's good. She, she's good. She's got an agent for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I started using my agent for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a good tip, get an agent. <laughs> yeah, and definitely follow Ashley on social media because she is constantly posting amazing artwork. I've seen some of the, the black and gold stuff and it is really, really dope. Check that out. Any, uh, any other questions? Jacob, I know you got a question. Well, it's not really more of a question. It like the fact that you were, because I, I kind of had an idea like this when I was about ten years old, so about like two years ago now, where I would like I would make a story, but each and every page, it would just be a gif of what happened on the actual page. I was like, oh, somebody's like this act, this technology can already exist. So that's pretty cool when I when I heard that you were doing that. Yeah, absolutely. This is this technology is really exciting. I mean, the idea of enhancing a comic book, like, I mean, something that we all already love, right? Enhancing it with something else we all also love, animation and uh, history, which is something I personally love. So it's uh, just a win, win, win all the way around. And that's super exciting. So um, what else do you wanna share about the project? And this, does anybody else have any questions they want to throw out? Before we wrap it up. Well, I'll, I'll do the last uh, announcement. Um, 
So July 8th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're doing actually a theatrical production of the comic book uh, with the Stella Adler Acting School, which is one of the top acting schools in the United States. Um, obviously, it's going to be on Zoom because it's not fully open, but we have some amazing actors playing the parts, um, and it's free. If you go on our website, Power of Jupiter, you can get uh, the free tickets and watch the comic book come to life with the uh, actors. So it's kind of cool. Thanks. That sounds really exciting. And definitely share that with us and we'll share that on our pages. And I definitely also want to mention to uh, all our audience members there that on our YouTube page, there's also a workshop by Ashley and Ram um, showing uh, how they designed the characters and some of the, uh, the work that they did on the comic. And definitely check that out. It was it's really, really cool. You get to see Ashley actually actually drawing out the, some of these characters you see. So I'll put it out there. Any more questions from the audience? <laughs> All right. Well, it has been really, really amazing talking with the two of you about this project. I'm very, very excited about it. I'm excited to see the live action version. I'm excited to read the comic book. And um, so finishes out, I know that the powerofjupiter.com is where you can find uh, the download of the book. Where can we find printed copies of the book? Well, we have printed copies. We haven't really um, been distributing them except through the festival. So uh, hopefully in September, we'll have more out there. Um, I would say go get on a website, sign up for the email list, and just we'll keep you updated about it. All right. And can you just let us know, like, what's your uh, social media and all the other places we can yeah, it's all. Out? Yeah, it's all Power of Jupiter um, in, in all formats, website, uh, social media, and everything else. Okay. And how about your, your other work, like your Indian uh, comics? That uh, superhero? Yes. Well, I kept it. I made it easy. It's called power of priya <laughs> so power of, <laughs> p p r p r i y a so yeah power of jupiter power of priya and then my next one will be power of ashley <laughs> um so uh i'll i will be returning to the uh, comic book convention scene next uh month in august and so i will have a couple of copies of jupiter invisible uh with me uh, my next uh, show is called The Old Show, and that's in New Hampshire. So that's in uh, the latter part of August. So um, other than that, um, yeah. That's close enough for us to get to. And uh, also my uh, website is ashleyawoods.com. Great. All right, well, definitely follow all their stuff, download the comic, you know, uh, follow Ashley to see what the new stuff she's working on. Follow Ram to see the new projects she's working on. And Ram also has a bunch of other, you know, documentary films and comic projects to check out as well, which I highly recommend. They look really amazing. But I want to thank both of you for coming to Comics and Color and being a part of this. This was amazing. Uh, this is a very, very exciting project. And it was a pleasure to have you both on here. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Get out there and enjoy some sunshine and this beautiful June weekend. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right. Have a good day, everybody. You too. Thank you.